guys, how are we doing? Now, today is my last day with the MRS, unfortunately. It's getting handed back over tonight. Uh, I'm going to go pick up the uh, M3 off 7, do the switcheroo. Um, I'm going to miss it, definitely going to miss it. It's, it's a good car. Now, unfortunately, all my time that I've been kind of doing stuff in the car this week has been at night where it's been dark. Now, Seb did say that I was allowed to take it on a track day, but didn't quite manage that either this week. I also was thinking about possibly taking it to the ring, but... Uh, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, to make myself available to do anything kind of like that But I've had a lot of fun in the car just driving it about on the road um, Last night went out and did nearly 200 miles just just driving about on country roads It was a lot of fun and this this car is a lot of fun now. I'm currently just out towards Hawes um, which is in North Yorkshire and Loads of bikes out today. So I managed to get an early finish today from work and I've been out for a blast up to where we are now. So today I'm going to do a video just kind of concluding my thoughts on the MRS, kind of a bit of a, a review. And in a second, once this road frees up a bit, I'm just waiting to get a, a decent clear run down here. Once we get a clear run, I'll take it for a drive just down the Ribblehead Pass. So like I say, I've been driving this car quite a lot this week. I've driven it to work every day. You know, I've had a couple of little drives in the evenings as well. It is really good and the fact that it's midship really does take quite a bit of learning to try and drive fast. Now as I've been driving it more and more this week what I've learned to do is kind of use the weight kind of to not to an advantage because I still don't think it's the right place for an engine. I think probably FR is still my number one layout but as far as fun goes and keeping on your toes this car keeps you on your toes. You really have to concentrate when you're driving this car fast. It's really twitchy especially on a narrow B road or on a back road. It's super, super twitchy and I don't want to make it sound like it's dangerous. I think if you're not a confident driver, I think you could really struggle with this. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm the best driver in the world. I do actually think that, you know, this car could catch me out one day. Well, that was random. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just parked up on this road. You see there's quite a few cars blasting past. You just saw that EP3 there. It's absolutely going. I can still hear it now. Um, smashing it. Now, there are a few things that I would want to change if the car was mine. And I spoke to Seb the other day and we, we, we talked about it. And they're all things that he was going to do anyway. Um, the brakes aren't amazing. I think they're only 240 mil discs on the front. Which I know you can argue that it's only a light car, but... I mean, my Integra weighs about the same as this and I've got 300 mil four pots up the front. Now there's not a lot of bite from the pedal at all and you really need to know the road that you're driving on to be able to drive fast with these brakes at least. There's, there's, they're not very confidence inspiring. I know I complain about brakes a lot but we need to make brakes great again because I can't remember the last time I drove a car with properly good brakes. Actually Rolex Dan's Ibiza has got some, I can't remember what brand they are but he's just got some new six or four pot. I think it might be six pots on these Ibiza and they are so good, that's the last time that's, I think that's the only car I've driven this year that's had properly outstanding brakes Now other than the brakes, the general kind of performance of the engine is pretty strong but the standard ECU really does let it down It's just really annoying kind of dropping out of VTEC so much because the VTEC engagement points five and a half thousand RPM from what I can tell and uh, on my Integra it's four and a half. It's only a thousand less, but it makes such a big difference. Now obviously I'm going to be comparing this car with my Integra. We've got a walker there, look. Now obviously I'm going to be comparing this car with my Integra because, you know, it's, it's pretty similar, right? I'm allowed to do that. Now the actual overall handling of the car, apart from it being a bit twitchy, but I'm not too sure if that's just because it's mid-engined, it feels pretty well set up, to be honest. It's, it's nice. The coilovers aren't stiff. You can tell the spring rates aren't too high, but they don't seem to like little bumps very well which is a bit bit odd, like just when you're on country roads like this and there's some of the smaller little bumps it can really upset the car. Now it is a bit twitchy on some of the narrower roads but it is such an experience to drive. It's, it's like nothing else I've driven fast really. It's, I say it's not the fastest thing in the world but it's just really, really fun and it's really engaging and really rewarding when you kind of nail a corner and you're coming through and you can just get a hint of the weight from behind and you just kind of use that to to pull you around the corner and you know modulating the throttle through and it just yeah it's really nice to drive and that's why I've spent so much time this week driving it. I think I've done about three or four hundred miles in the car this week um, which is quite a lot I guess. Now another thing that I'd change which I think will be no surprise to most people is these seats and um, I don't really mind this one too much. I sat in it earlier the EP3 seat you know it's gonna be comfortable but this Cobra I don't know what it is, but it's not comfortable. 
Um, after a few hours of driving, on, especially on country roads and things, it, it my ass is numb. I, I can't feel anything. I keep having to lift myself up and just give my ass a bit of breathing room, just to let the blood flow a bit, because you are literally sat on the thinnest piece of padding, and then you're right onto the fiberglass seat, and it's just, it's not a comfortable seat at all. It needs a pole position, of course, that's what it needs. But overall, still a great car. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. I mean, obviously I've got to talk about the pros and cons just to give you guys an idea of, of how it is to drive. I think what we should do, actually, is go for a drive now. The pass looks pretty clear at the minute. If we can get out into this gap, that'll be good. So I'll stick the GoPro on and I'll stick the microphone on. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I know the microphone's not the best, but when I'm speaking, you can probably hear me. And you'll get some nice notes off the K20 engine as well because it does sound pretty good. It's a bit loud, but it does sound pretty good when it's on full chat. So let's go for a drive. These harnesses are shite. They can't be real. They keep coming loose. So guys, we're on the Riverlead Pass. We're in the MR2. Hopefully you can hear me. It's fucking loud, this car. It's a love-hate relationship with the sound of the exhaust because sometimes I love it because it's like a race car. But then other times, you know, when you're waking up your neighbours at half past seven, <laughs> which is what I've been doing. Yeah. Whoa. Will I jump? Okay, so the MR2, what do I like about it? That. I quite like that, that's alright. It sounds nice. This road is so good. Oh no, there's some traffic lights ahead. That's not what we want to see, is it? I think for a car to just kind of go out and drive and, and have fun. It doesn't really matter about the ECU tune, it doesn't really matter about the brakes. It is a car that you can just take out and have a razz and have a lot of fun in. It's great. It's really good. I hope you can see some of the scenery that we've got. It's really quite nice around here. One thing I've noticed that you've got to do with this car, you can't clench the steering wheel too hard. You kind of have to let the steering wheel kind of not float around in your hands, of course, that'd be stupid, but you definitely have to have a looser grip because it's just, I found that if you get like a real good grip on the steering wheel and you don't let go and you're, you're really trying to keep this car on the road, now that's when you end up upsetting the car and that's when it can get a bit dangerous. I mean, it's dangerous anyway, it's a mid engined It's so much fun, but yeah, dangerous. MR2s don't have the reputation that they have for no reason. And you can definitely tell that when you're driving it. Especially one with... Uh... and get a clear run at the Riverlet Pass has failed. Uh, we're currently stuck behind a some kind of skip lorry which who has a skip round here? <laughs> Surely not many people. Now I've got a chance to overtake this lorry so no I'm not. So yeah a Lotus Exige especially if you want one with a K20 engine which there are some about that's gonna cost you like 20 grand 25 grand Whereas this, this kind of seems like a bit of a bargain when you look at it like that. I think my overtaking spot. Okay, we're on the wagon. So this road's gonna take us down to Ribblehead Viaduct. Now there's a really nice photo opportunity there, so that might be the thumbnail for the video. Ribblehead Viaduct, is it? It is. One thing is though, there's sheep everywhere around here. Got to watch out for the sheep.
I'm not bothered by the VTEC at all. I just love the way you're coming into a corner. The pedals are lovely as well. You downshift in. You just feel the car flow through. It's fucking. It's, it's really good. That must just be a mid-engine thing, because I've not really had these feelings before with the car. Feels, bro. It's just the way you feel the weight of the car through a corner. It's, it's, it's like nothing else. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I enjoyed driving a car quite as much as this. It's great. It's tiresome at the same time. Like My ass is quite very numb now. Where should we go? Yeah, it's going to be a shame to give it back. Um, I was thinking about maybe building one. Um, been having some silly ideas this week, as you can imagine. But I want to finish my Integra first, and uh, maybe we can look at something like this in the future. Yeah, it is a great little car, and it is really little as well. Like if I just stand next to it, like it's not much bigger than my hip. How do I even fit in it? I don't know, but I do. So yeah, I'm going to be taking the car back to Seb tonight and getting the uh, getting the M3 back off him. M3's had its airbag recall, so thanks to Seb for taking it in for me. It's worked out pretty well for me, this deal, hasn't it? I got to drive this quality car all week, have a lot of fun, and I get my M3 back all clean and sorted out. Not bad, not bad. So yeah, overall I've had great fun driving this car this week. Big thanks to Seb for giving me the opportunity. It's been it's been quite a, a lovely experience, uh, to say the least. You know, it's been it's been fucking fantastic to be fair. So, yeah, thanks a lot for that. I mean, I'd, I'd be repeating myself if I talked about the car anymore. You know my thoughts. It's, it's it's really good. It could be better, but as it is, it's 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 still really good. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's great. Compliments to the chef because the, the guy who built the car obviously did a, a, a decent job um, I'll stick a link to his YouTube channel in the description as well. You can go and check some of his videos out There's a few suspect things on this car, which I'm not, not too sure about you know the, the seat and I don't think these harnesses are genuine I don't think they're genuine to car. They, they feel far too soft and comfortable and you know the, the clasp looks a bit suspect I'm, I'm not sold um, Just look at that and see what I mean That's not genuine is it come on I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and yeah, the seat, I know I've said the seat a million times, but it is genuinely one of the worst seats I've sat in. Um, just being honest, not being a dickhead, just I don't think everyone's aware. I think Seb's aware that the, the seat is pretty gash. Um, I mean, it's all right, it's all right, it's not too bad. I don't know why you've got mix matched. Now, I've had mix matched seats before, so I can't talk too much, but EP3 seat and something else. I guess the uh, guy who built the car must have bought an EP3 for the engine and just thought, oh, well, I've got a spare seat here, I'll just stick that in, <laughs> which is fair enough. Right, I'm going to trap off and try and find some civilization. Hopefully find some good roads on the way to it, though. Now, the car feels so good on, on roads like this. You can tell it's definitely like been designed from the start to, to just be a, a nice, pleasurable driving machine. Perhaps not the ultimate driving machine, but, um, yeah, pretty close. Maybe in the future we'll build something like this. I'm certainly keen to, to have another go. Or maybe we'll just buy it off him in the future. I'm sure Seb will get bored of this soon. He seems like the kind of guy who changes car quite regularly. Uh, I know another guy like that, but he's pretty happy at the minute with what he's got. But no, maybe in the future. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <sighs> right, guys, if you enjoyed the Little MR2 series, don't forget to subscribe. There's plenty more to come on various other projects. Right, so I'll catch you in a bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, please. Inflate the YouTube ego a bit more. That'll be sound. Right, I'm gonna go off, so I'll catch you in a bit.